Tiger Two. You even said Tiger Two. This is mass madness, you maniac. It's God's name. You people are the real thing. We are the illusion. This is very important. Uh, I've got a few little pieces to talk about. From Subliminal Seduction, this is a book from 1972. Uh, this is covered actually uh, with Plato. And uh, the first recorded mention of subliminal perception. So this is actually uh, related to the early writings of the, of the Greek classics. Uh, the, Greek, the Greek philosophers and uh, in, incidentally, these uh, influences of the uh, secrets of the ages of, is what they are protecting, ladies and gentlemen. This small group of people who want to control the world have many, many secrets of the ages that they, who are imbued with the knowledge, keep this secret. This is the real true goal. It's to keep the society, the elders, the priests, for lack of a better word, going back to the beginning, uh, in control, which is what they've done throughout time. So this is actually nothing new. The New World Order isn't anything new. It's very old. But the intention has shifted over time uh, as far as the control mechanisms behind it. Now, this goes back to the point when uh, you talk about Prometheus and the fire. Uh, same old, these, these classical myths, the stories, the Greek stories, the Greek myths, and then the Roman gods, which copied the Greeks. And we go into this whole diatribe to understand that manipulation and uh, subliminal messages and mind control propaganda have been developed over centuries, eons. And the first recorded mention of subliminal perception may be in the writings of Democritus, interestingly enough, in 400 BC, who maintained, much is perceptible which is not perceived by us. Plato also dealt with the notion in his work, Timaeus. Aristotle more specifically discussed subliminal awareness thresholds in his Parva Naturalia nearly 2,000 years ago and appears to have been the first to suggest that consciously unperceived stimuli could affect dreams. Aristotle, 2,250 years ago, explained in his dream theory that impulses occurring in the daytime, if they are not very great and powerful, pass unnoticed because of the great awakening impulses. But in the time of sleep, the opposite takes place. For then small impulses seem to be great. This is clear when it happens when people sleep. Men believe it is lightning and thunder when there are only faint echoes in their ears. They believe they are enjoying honey and sweet flowers when only a drop of phlegm is slipping down their throats. So wrote Aristotle. He anticipated what in the early 20th century became known as the Poetzel effect. Of course, this is a very, very big part of uh, where the background of Edward Bernays's propaganda and his many writings and controlling society, social control, um, through subliminal things. Um, there are just so many instances of it. Um, example here uh, that is great is um, now we have in 1972, a highly publicized $1 million research study, which was sponsored by the U.S. Surgeon General's Office, which uh, tried to explore the impact of televised violence. In a dramatic example of the intellectual and moral bankruptcy of the so-called so social sciences in North America, TV Guide referred to the study as the $1 million misunderstanding. The study was performed and analyzed by a large, carefully selected group of the most illustrious names in social science research, a truly blue book stable of American intelligentsia. The findings of this group were pathetic nonsense. The authors summarized the totality of their findings as, we have noted in the studies a modest association between viewing of violence and aggression among at least some children, and we have noted some data which are consonant with the interpretation that violence viewing produces the aggression. 
This evidence is not conclusive, however, and some daters are not consonant with other interpretations. Nonsense. Media has proven completely established to have the ability to program human behavior much in the same way as hypnosis. And if there is one common dominant theme in American media that is even more pervasive than sex, it is violence. The taxpayers' money squandered on the nonsense game did not find a casual relationship between TV and violence because it would have produced an embarrassing problem for the Nixon administration and three TV networks and the advertisers whose well-being appeared to have been a major consideration among those alleged scientists who performed the research. Well, they, like I said, everything is, uh, is, is co-opted. To keep this agenda in place, to keep the New World Order moving forward. Now let's take a look at this article that was in the uh, Register Citizen on uh, February 12th, 2014. Out of state cash, big in Connecticut. Everybody see that? Well, it sure is. And guess where it comes from? Singer Barbara Streisand, actor Ed Norton, and White House Chief of Staff John Podesta are only a few of many out of state donors who have supported members of Connecticut's congressional delegation. In fact, money from out of state individuals and political action committees is dwarfing contributions from Connecticut voters, a Connecticut mirror analysis of Federal Election Commission data shows. Washington, D.C. was a major source of campaign money for the state's five representatives. More than 25% of the money delegation and their challenge raised, challengers raised last year came from the nation's private capital. You know, the, you do know that Washington, D.C. is a city state it's a private city it's its own country did you realize that its jurisdiction is technically that is the jurisdiction of the united states government but um they tend they want us to believe otherwise but i'm digressing okay please research all this stuff it's true um rep jim hines of the fourth district now rep jim hines uh is a member of the club and he's received the most money 1.2 million uh, and he raised the most money from these five from these campaign donations from these uh, people that are part of the club and what is the club well the club is uh, high-level officials in the council and foreign relations but most importantly you gotta understand that Jim Hines is a Rhodes Scholar like Bill Clinton and the Rhodes Scholars are dedicated to enhancing the Anglo-American establishment, actually the British uh, Empire. And Cecil Rhodes created this for this very same intent, to keep this control. And it is, unfortunately, um, why the world is the way it is today and how America is becoming a socialist, uh, authoritarian, totalitarian country. The reason is because it has been diagnosed by many, many people. The evidence is, is superfluous. It's, it's everywhere. You just have to look at it. Um, that there is a plot. It's in their own writings. Read, the, read Foreign Affairs, the, current, the Council on Foreign Relations magazines. Uh, every time you read that, about two years later, it comes true. Or look back in history at what's happened in two years previous. It's just they plan the world. They literally plan the world, and they talk about what's going to happen. Some of their predictions aren't, of course, accurate, but incredibly so, many of them are. Most of them. And this is historical, and you can check it out. You can go and look at their own documents. I'm, I'm not talking from ignorance here. I've done the research. And that's what, what is important, is we all have to take the time out of our busy, chaotic lives that have been designed to be this way, while they steal everything from us, the wealth of us, our freedom, um... Now, here in Connecticut, uh, gun I'm very proud to say that uh, people aren't re-registering re their guns. They've registered their guns. They're supposed to register their AR-15s. But these guns were already registered, so why do they have to register them again? And if you don't register them again, it's a Class D felony. And then you can't own a gun. Um, things are getting really out of control, ladies and gentlemen. This is not an opinion. Um, please... Uh, I don't do this for any other reason than to, I know what's going on, I know what's happening, and um, others have to speak out. Once you do the research, I know I've, I've woken up a lot of people 
close friends of mine that are now activists themselves and um, you know that's what we need to do we need to raise awareness about the chemtrails about the vaccines about the flu shots which is just a vaccine uh, about the GMO foods all of these things are all part of this control it's all part of the same clubs agenda the Milner group that's what they're known as the Milner group check it out don't believe me find your own truth there is only one truth seek and you'll find it And this present window of opportunity during which a truly peaceful and interdependent world order might be built will not be here for open for too long. Do any shit you want to hear. We do it in illusions, man. None of it is true. You're beginning to believe the illusions we're spinning here. You're beginning to think that the truth is reality and that your own lives are unreal. You do whatever the tube tells you. You dress like the tube, you ate like the tube, you raise your children like the tube, you even think like the tube. This is mass madness, you maniacs. In God's name, you people are the real thing. We are the illusions. When we are successful, we work it. We have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. Yes, the need for a new world order. But it has different characteristics and different gods of, of the world. And the president outlined his vision of a new world order in which the U.S. would participate fully, one rooted on core basic principles. Not for the The promotion of peace and security. The preservation of our planet. And a global economy that advances opportunity for all people. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. It's about the peace of Europe and a new world order. After 1989, President Bush kept saying, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. If you plan, you can keep your plan.